Today we're going to do an input shaft installation on an MV4500 transmission. The MV4500s you can find in uh, 1994 to uh, some 2003 and 2004 uh, Dodge pickup trucks. This is the five-speed transmission that was offered in the Dodge trucks. Uh, the input shaft upgrade is a 1.375. Uh, we use the input shaft upgrade on uh, are some of our street dual disc models uh, that we offer and also uh, our competition dual, or dual, dual disc and triple disc, uh, triple disc clutches. So if you purchase any of those clutches, you're gonna have to do an input shaft upgrade, uh, which we definitely recommend. So to begin with our installation, we removed our bell housing. There's four bolts on the bell housing to remove it, 19 metric to remove them. Now we're gonna remove the input shaft collar. half inch to remove, half inch socket to remove these. Uh, there is some Permatex behind this collar, so what we're gonna have to do to dislodge the Permatex is just use a soft face hammer, knock around on it. Also a lot easier when you do this versus having the bell housing on. Pull your collar just straight away. All right, and now our input shaft. To remove the input shaft, you just work it up and down. And it will come right out for you. Okay. You can push it forward to get your uh, gear mesh right to be able to pull it out. And you'll notice on the in, inside of there, it's one of the um, bearings that we're actually going to be replacing so it'll, it should come out with the input shaft all right now inside here is a thrust bearing that we're going to be removing i'm going to try to do this with my fingers without having to get so picks out here okay. and there's our thrust bearing that we removed so that's the removal of the stock input shaft. Our installation of our input shaft on our MV4500, first thing we've got to do is we've got to clean the Permatex off of the casing here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and just scrape it off first. Put a catch rag in there to try to keep as much of it as we can out of the transmission. Get this Permatex on the inside here as well. All right, going with our in, in, back with our input shaft now. We're going to take our two bearings, our thrust bearing and our other pilot bearing here, and we're just going to go ahead and soak them in oil and have them ready to go back on our install. We're going to go ahead and slide them back in the transmission. Now when you go to put our thrust bearing in, you want to make sure that the bearing are out. All right. Now we're going to put our pilot bearing in now as well. Next that step is to take our new input shaft. We're actually just gonna let it soak in a little bit of oil as well. 
And while it's soaking, we're gonna go ahead and get our input shaft collar ready, prepped up. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna be permatexing this. Uh, the permatex we use around the shop is uh, the Ford Power Stroke permatex is, is what we try to use most all the time. This is some really good stuff. If you guys are looking for a good, good permatex. All right, we've got our input shaft oiled up now. We're gonna go ahead and start it in. Just watch your gear last there. There we go. Make sure it goes back and you hear a pretty solid thud when it goes back in there. When it first goes back, it's gonna stop. You wanna keep working it up and down until it goes back to that second stage. Then you know you've got it right. Now we're gonna put our retaining collar on. Our retaining collar has got an oiling hole right here at the top. You wanna to make sure that that orients towards the top. I'm just gonna smooth out our Permatex here just a little bit. So again, you wanna make sure your oiling hole is towards the top here. Now we want to torque down our, our collar. Uh, 22 foot pounds is the specified torque here. You want to try to do it in a crisscross pattern as well. So we're taking these to 22 now. Now that we've got our our 
input shaft retaining collar on, we're going to flip the transmission over and we're going to set it up with a dial indicator and check in play of the input shaft. We have our input shaft on our MV4500 install, installed now. What we're going to do is we're going to check in play. Uh, now a lot of you, this is probably going to freak everybody out, but it's, it's no big deal, okay? Inside of your kit, inside your input shaft kit, South Bend will send you a set of shims to, uh, to set in play on this transmission. I don't suggest the just everyday guy to set up in play on this transmission. You will have to, to pull down the entire rear half of the, ha the output shaft housing. All the fifth gear assembly have to come off to get the bearing plate to put it up, to put a, to put it in. But if you have a good transmission, more than likely your input shaft your in play is going to be okay. But we're going to check it. Now, in your instructions, your specification says that, in, that South Bend gives you a uh, specification of five to ten thousandths. Uh, in play on the trans on the on the input shaft, um, the manual calls for two to six thousandths. So what we're going to do is we're going to install our dial indicator now on the block on our input shaft. You want to make sure that you've got your transmission in a vertical position. We're going to install our dial indicator now. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll zero our dial indicator here and say we're looking for between two and six thousandths in play. And checking in play without having the having the main cap off of the transmission and, and, and whatnot. We're just this is just a just a general check of it. What we're gonna be doing is checking right here. So uh, of course our zero is upside down so we've got to read it upside down. But in play you just want to go ahead and grab your input shaft and try to move up and down on it. That's that's in play of the shaft in and out of the Z axis. So you can see right there, we've got about four thousandths in play, and that's within specification. So this transmission's in good shape. So that's got our input shaft installed done for, on our MV4500. Um, if you do have an in play that's out an in play that's out of tolerance uh, on one of these transmissions. I suggest having the, the shims put in by a professional. Uh, so if you have a question on this installation or any of our other installations, just give us a call. Thank you.